Kroger Delivery has one mission, to deliver the freshest food right to your door. That's why our drivers are pros. Our trucks are refrigerated. And when it comes to low prices, we always deliver. With $20 off your first order of $75 or more, there's no better time to get in on the action. Mission accomplished. Restrictions apply. See site for details. They don't call our confiscation Kamala for nothing. Don't take it from us. And I support a mandatory buyback program. A mandatory buyback program? That means the government forcing you to turn in your firearms. To what lengths would Kamala go? Well, she doesn't even support the individual right to own a firearm. I'm prepared to take executive action and put in place a ban on the importation of assault weapons into our country. We get it. Sometimes it's tough to understand what she's talking about. But on the Second Amendment and your rights, confiscation Kamala has been crystal clear. Her gun control agenda comes straight from that petri dish of bad ideas that is California. She can claim to be a gun owner all she wants, but we all know she's the same anti-gun California radical she's always been. Don't be left defenseless. Defeat confiscation Kamala. Vote Trump like your life depends on it, because it does. NRA Political Victory Fund paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. NRAPVF.org. Live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Souchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. I got Myron Metcalf in for Patrick. Myron of ESPN, college basketball fame and ESPN radio. But I'm so glad Myron and I were talking off the air. We are on exactly the same page when it comes to Case Keenum. We are. Uh, we, neither of us, understand... Why there's what? Not more love given to him? I don't understand it. I don't know what else he has to do. Either do I. Uh, Reavers and I were talking about this before the show, and Reavers seems more cool and collected about it than I am. But it seems to me he's just being treated too casually. Yeah, and I, and I don't understand that because you look at the history of quarterbacks here who've had big seasons, whether it was Cunningham or Moon or Dante Culpepper, Brett Favre the year he was here, the two years we played well run one year. And those guys were praised and celebrated. Mm -hmm. And this guy can't even get that appreciation from his own coaching staff. I don't get it. Zimmer won't. Zimmer, it's his fault, I think. If Zimmer comes out and says, this is my guy, Mm -hmm. we're going to ride with him the whole way, I think a lot of people will get on board with that. Has that been said? No. And I think that's the problem. These little league motivational tactics. You know, hey, I I, I don't want to tell him too much. I don't want to make him too confident. This guy has helped you win 13 games. Yeah. You, you are getting a first round by because of him, and you're still in that position? Doesn't it, make sense to me. It seems to me that Zimmer has uh, executed creative tension all year. Yeah. Well, you know, he's pretty good, but let's see what next week's like. Yeah. Reavers, you agree? He's recording. Where no, I'm is kidding. No. Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I think, and I've, I have said this since day one, and I, whether you agree with it or not, I think Zimmer has done this, done it this way because he is trying to motivate who a guy who has been a career backup. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it, it's worked. I mean, personally, I don't think Case— That makes the presumption that he needed motivation. But, but that's exactly. the thing. I don't think Case Keenum is the kind of guy that needs it, to be honest with you, because he, he when he signed with this team, knew he was going to be a backup, and he has been his entire career. But at the same time, he's like— I don't. I don't need to be patted on the head and told me how, and being and told how good I am. I, I just. I really don't think that. So I, I don't think any of it matters to him. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Well, I hope you're right. What if he's just good? Yeah. Has anybody ever thought of that? Like, well, what if he's just good? That's I mean, what I was wondering. Did he? Did he come? Did he come out of nowhere? Or did he have some? He's on what four other teams? Or as, as a yeah. backup, but I mean, where, was he ever tested in the NFL prior? Well, to... Well, he was an undrafted kid who had who put up a lot of numbers at Houston when he was a collegiate player. He went undrafted, and he's a guy that's had to fight and claw for basically everything. He's a, he's a self made man in the NFL, which yeah. which is impressive. I don't understand why we don't back a guy like that though. But I do you think, think we don't though? Do you think the fan no. base doesn't? Not, really? not to the degree that I think so many other quarterbacks in his position would be back. Hmm. I mean, I, I think you should be throwing a parade for this guy every day considering what he's done in the situation that the team was in at the start of the year. And, and I don't think – I think the teams that do this consistently, they back their guys, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's no debate 
about what you're going to get out of New England or Pittsburgh with Roethlisberger or some of these other established franchises. Russell Wilson ain't in the playoffs, but guess what? That team still backs him. You know who the guy is there. Mm -hmm. Case Keenum, I think, has earned that. Mm -hmm. and, and already we're talking about, okay, is Bridgewater ever coming back? Bradford gets activated. Nobody wants to pay Case Keenum. I don't understand it because this guy has done what few have ever done, and he can lead him to the Super Bowl. I'm not sure what else he has to do. Well, let's let's go with the theory that Zimmer knows what he's doing. Yeah. All right. And Zimmer has carefully crafted uh, uh, a situation where he has managed to inspire Keenum to this level. And that I think that's the reverse theory. Yeah. Uh, the week-to-week -week creative tension that keeps Keenum sharp. Is that your theory, Reavers? Yeah. I think, I think that that's been Zimmer's M.O. from day one. But well, it worked. Yeah. If that's if that's how it worked, it worked. Are we giving Zimmer too much credit though? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't think. Well, I mean, are we making him out to be the the QB whisperer to some degree? When <laughs> when he didn't know what he was going to get. But to yet. be honest, though, Myron, Pat Shermer has had way more to do with the success of Case Keenum in this offense than Mike Zimmer has this year. But Zimmer's take Zimmer is acting as the guy, at least publicly, who's saying, "Look, uh, you know, I, I'm the one who." is doing the right thing psychologically to put uh, Case Keenum in this position where he feels like he's got to earn this position every game. I mean, mm -hmm. that's been sort of the message. That's the message I've gotten all year long. Keenum had to earn the start every yep. week. Yep. That's the message I've gotten. And I that's the message that puzzles. But why? But okay. But why? Why? Why is that a bad message? Because well, why did he have to keep earning the right to start each following week after a victory? Sure. But okay. But that's that, that's kind of the way that. The entire league league is wired. Reavers, you think there's any other quarterback going into the playoffs that's in that situation? Not on a current playoff team, as I'm trying to. Well, Tyrod Taylor, basically. Well, with, well, the, with we don't include cool Buffalo, right? right? Um, but but as far as the rest of the teams in the league, no, they, all of their quarterbacks are pretty much entrenched into their starting spots, and probably will be next year too. And at some point, you have to want that. I, I would think going into the playoffs, fine. You've been doing all this psychological maneuvering throughout the season. Going into the playoffs on a team that has a chance to win it all, I would want him to have complete confidence that he is the guy. But one week though, Zimmer did come out and say, you know, that's where we got the great the, the great quote about him saying the size of the swimsuit area that he admires about Case Keenum. Remember that quote a couple of weeks ago? I forget after which victory it was. But yeah, I remember vaguely. Z Zimmer basically mm -hmm. said he's got the, the the thing he admires the most about him is he's got guts and he's got. The large, you know what area? Yeah. But I think you say that about the the blue collar guy who surprises you one week and you go, "Wow, th this this guy played better than we ever could have imagined." Well, here's the you thing: you say about a guy who's thirteen and three essentially led you to the playoffs in the first round by. Regardless dude. of what happens in the playoffs, I mean, the rest of the league is. I mean, he's Case Keenum's going to get paid, whether it's here or whether it's with a different team. He he has he has earned the right to have a, a to sign a large contract in the off season. There's no question about that. Why not here? Either I, here or elsewhere. Either here or elsewhere. But why not here? I yeah, think it should here? be here, but but that, that's not my decision. Would you but pay him? I would. I would. So I don't understand the debate. Are they in a position to not pay him? Am I missing something? I, uh, I, I don't know. I keep wondering if I'm missing something. No, they, they should because they'll lose the money that they're paying for Bradford and then the money that they're paying for Teddy. What do the fans think of, of Keenum? I think the fans. I got to think they're comforted by this. I, I guy. do too. I, I think the fan base does root for and, and genuinely likes this guy as Plus, their quarterback. Fans usually have a very short attention span where or or memory where okay Teddy Bradford okay yep we forgot all about him because Case is here and then when I Case, don't think anybody's forgotten about Teddy. Uh, Myron was saying Teddy's gotten better somehow. Yeah, not playing. <laughs> he, he, he's Marino now. Yeah. <laughs> he started out as Bridgewater and he became Elway when he was hurt. <laughs> now now that we set it on Marino. Well, that's why it'll be interesting to see what they do decide to do at backup quarterback for the playoffs because now that Bradford's been cleared to practice, you know what. The, and who knows? They might dress both of them. I have no idea what they're going to plan on if doing. If both of those two are healthy, uh, were healthy, would you have the same result because the team is so strong and so deep? I mean, that, that's a that's a fair question, but all we know is what we have in front of us. Yeah. A fair question. And, that, and that's what Casey was doing. Question. I didn't even I'm get saying that. if you had Bridgewater or Bradford in as a healthy quarterback – would the Vikings most likely be in the same position because their offense and their, their offensive line is strong, the defense is very strong? I think we only asked that question, though, about a guy like Case Keenum. Like, the only thing they I can compare this to... Dalvin Cook. 
True. Mm-hmm. I can only compare this to the year when Brett leads the team to the NFC Championship. Now, that's Brett. I get it. That's a whole different league. Mm-hmm. But in terms of just the frenzy and the hoopla and just how crazy people were for Brett in that one year, mm-hmm. nothing like that for Case Keenum this year. And but I'm not saying it should be to that degree. That was a Hall of Fame quarterback. No, I, I get that. To save the day. I get that. But, I mean, people were doing the role with Dante Culpepper. And, sure. I mean, there are a lot of quarterbacks who've been here that I think could say they felt loved during their time here, even if it was a brief stretch uh, with the Vikings, I don't think Case Keenum can say that. But there's still so much uncertainty around him, just given the fact that he's been a journeyman backup quarterback for the majority of his career. I know he started last year for the Rams. I, and think, he started you just in said, I think you just said the key word. What? Why at this point, on January 2nd, they're 13-3, and three, they have a bye, why is there uncertainty? That's the question. That's that's the word. Why why in the hell should there be uncertainty? Why not enjoy the hell out of this guy and say, I can't wait till Keese lines up, Ke- uh, Casey lines what the hell is his name? Keenum. Keenum lines up two weeks from now. But I, I think they wait. will, Joe. I, I, it, regardless of what, what, what the fans, I, I, I think there, there's going to be 65, 66,000 screaming fans are going to pay top dollar to go to that playoff game on the 14th or whatever it is, I think. I, I think, think it's the 14th. I think Bridgewater's the 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 challenge for Keenum in that Bridgewater is is so likable, he's so beloved. So is Keenum. I, I agree, but I think Bridgewater's situation there's so much sympathy about what happened there. Yeah, yeah. And there's still this dream, and I think Zimmer's the guy who is still putting it out there that hey, maybe this guy somehow gets healthy and saves the day. So what you're saying is Bridgewater is the high school sweetheart that yes. we've been in love yes. with since grade school. Yes. And Keenum's the hot new chick our freshman year of, Ke- of college. Keenum can't get a third date. <laughs> he can't even get a third date. And we're ready to marry Bridgewater. I mean, that's the difference. That's the big difference right now. Oh, I think uh, I think it's delightful. I don't think the Vikings have ever been in a better situation in their franchise history. Well, going into the true, going into yeah. the first playoff game, I don't think they've ever been in a better situation. What message are they sending to Case Keenum, though? And I, I know we're talking about the now, but if he's their best option long term, if this is a guy they have to sign, what message are they sending to him in the off season? I don't know. Because to me, I'm going, I'm getting out of here. I'm going somewhere else where they're going to pay me and appreciate me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to stay in a place where I've got to convince my coach every week that I'm the guy. Will, will the Vikings survive the loss of Shermer? Because he's gone. He will get a head coaching yes. job. I will be surprised if he does not get a head coaching job. Um, that's a big. That's yeah. That's a pretty big question. I mean, he has had a lot to do with their success this year, well, especially the with the is quarterback. He's going to the Bears, right? Well, he's being. Uh, he was requested an interview with both the Lions and I believe the Bears also. They but, requested an interview with him? Yeah, so the way that the rule works, Joe, is because the Vikings are a playoff team, the fact that they have a bye, their assistant coaches can interview for other jobs in the league. But, for instance, if Jacksonville, they have to wait until the Jacksonville season is over because they have a, a game this this upcoming weekend. Which puts him at an, in a better position, I think. I mean, that he yeah. can interview now. So, like, the Patriots, the Patriots' top two assistant coaches – also are being requested for interviews because they also have a buy this week. Mm-hmm. So that's how the, the rule works in the NFL. All right, just a moment. You like to go for basketball team? I, I, I think there's still a lot of potential there. They got some flaws. Yeah. They haven't been healthy. Um, I think the Big Ten outside of Michigan State and Purdue is, is open for that third or fourth spot. Mm-hmm. So, but once they get healthy, uh, I saw them play at Miami up here. They look they look good, but I think they're still dealing with sort of this new set of expectations. Last year, nobody expected anything. This year, it's like, hey, maybe they can win the league. Maybe they're a sleeper, and I think they're feeling some of that pressure. So I'm interested to see what they'll do in conference play. Didn't they beat Harvard shooting 33%? They didn't shoot well. I mean, they haven't shot well all all year, and I think that's been the thing is they've been efficient. They haven't committed a lot of turnovers. They're big and strong inside, so they get a lot of offensive rebounds, scoring a lot of putbacks, but haven't hit a bunch of threes, haven't been great from the free throw line. So the thing with this team is when they go on the road in the Big Ten, which is where you have to win to win the actual title in the mm-hmm. league, mm-hmm. how will they perform? Is that offense enough? to help them beat some of the top-tier teams in this league? I think that's the big question they have to answer. You like the Timberwolves? 
a, a ton. You know, really? I, I think to me, I judge a team by how they deal with adversity mm-hmm. at this stage in the season. And a lot of teams losing their starting point guard, you know, would, would change it, would change everything. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they got a young guy like Tyus Jones who can come in and help them out being the, the young point guard who's just a smart player, uh, the way Jimmy Butler's playing. I think the most exciting develop it, development is Carl Towns possibly becoming this two-way guy. I mean, defensively, he's improving little by little. If that guy figures it out on the defensive end, you're talking about one of the top 15 players in the league, in my opinion. Do you think Towns. Butler's had an influence on Towns? Huge. I, I think the thing they missed was a a, a tough guy, you mm-hmm. know? and uh, It's hard for young guys to kind of help each other develop that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think they needed a, a Jimmy Butler to promote what Tom had been preaching last year. I mean, it's one thing for a coach to say, hey, we want you to play this scrappy style. It's another thing when you've got a guy who actually lives it and does it. And I think Butler has just changed that locker room and the attitude. Um, and it's like someone said about the Golden State Warriors, that's not a bunch of tough guys. Draymond Green's the only real tough guy, mm-hmm. but the other guys get to fake it. And mm-hmm. I think the T-Wolves are a lot like that. I think Jimmy Butler's a real tough guy. And you get to fake it just because, you know, he's the leader of the pack. So I really like what they're doing. What do you mean by a tough guy? I mean a guy who just has that edge. Mm-hmm. Y- young players don't have it. And, and to me, the big big difference in terms of players today, and I saw all these guys at the college level, is the way they come up is a lot different than it was 20 years ago. There's no more playground basketball. There's no more pickup basketball. So many things are structured for these kids. You know, mm-hmm. they're playing in air-conditioned gyms. Uh, with organized teams, it's not the the kind of free play that we all grew up playing. There's and no, there's no uh, 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 nets with chains. Ex- exactly right, <laughs> right. Exactly. All cotton. Yeah, no, no, no <laughs> carts, anything like milk carts, anything like that. And, and what happens is everything you do is is sort of this officiated, organized basketball. So you know you, you don't learn how to play tough. And I think that's been the biggest thing with some of these young players. And Butler's one of those guys who he has that old school. Edge, and I think these young players, as talented as they are, Towns and Wiggins, these guys needed that. That's why I, I thought of this yesterday. Buffalo is playing the Rangers at City Field in New York, the cool. N- one of the NHL outdoor games. Yeah. And I bet you could count on one hand the number of outdoor games the players on both those teams ever played in their life. Yep. That's a thing of the past. Oh. They're not playing outside. It's to a- get to the level they are, they've been indoors since they were six. Right. Yeah. Do you think that's changed? I mean, the game I think is different, and I don't want—I don't know if toughness is the right word, but there's just something about that gritty old school style yeah. um, that I think has been lost. You know, you know, old NHL players played a lot outdoors. These kids today have never. You played know, twelve ban. Uh, you know, the Bantams are not playing. You know, outside. <laughs> no, no. I don't even know if they have Bantams in Canada. But. <laughs> These, Whatever their equivalent I, I is. I watched that yesterday. They, they were as flummoxed by the cold weather as anybody in the stands. They had no idea what they were dealing with. But it was fun. 45,000 nice, people. Well, I think the NHL offers that as a throwback to those old school hockey players that, that, that did. That boards were set up outside, and boom, that's where they played. There were very rarely were there indoor hockey rinks. I went by the Groveland rinks again today. Oh, they're beautiful. Nothing, nobody on them. Basketball it's, well, it's, cold. It's, yeah, cold, it's too much. It's Twenty below zero this morning. Oh, and not at oh, not at so not at ten thirty in the morning. It wasn't. <laughs> Engelman and Coda are doing a great job on those Zamboni. <laughs> Kenny, we'd we'll play see. outdoors ten below, wouldn't we? Damn you right. and me. Damn right. Yeah. We'd skate backwards yeah, well, again, Hey, where do you skate again? I forget. What was the name of that ring? He's got a park over there. Oh, in he's over there. Okay. He plays in a lot. Yeah, I could take Draws Kenny skating backwards. <laughs> I got a kid tomorrow playing a hockey game outdoor at Groveland at five o'clock. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, just uh, it's uh, it's their a grade school hockey team. Oh, not the high school level. No, this isn't organized really, and this kid's going to be fun to watch because he hasn't played hockey. Wearing the figure skates, is he? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> we're, we're going to play it again tonight. We'll see what we can find it for. You don't kid. even have equipment for him? Uh, this is more, uh, it's a recreational <laughs> league. You know, if it's one game, why don't you just borrow some from Right, somebody? yeah, you we'll can do that. Yeah. Are you sitting in the stands the whole time? Uh, I'm right over, I'm heading over there right after work. Yeah. Just going to watch him play. Yeah. Sports Talk, we'll be back shortly. Here's John Hyde in the Sports Talk Newsroom. Thank you, Joe. Cloudy and 12 degrees. This update brought to you by Fratelloni's Ace Hardware and Garden Store, proud sponsor of The Beer Show with Mr. Reavers here on 1500 ESPN. 
Teams with coaching vacancies lining up to talk with Vikings offensive coordinator Pat Shermer. Uh, we heard yesterday the Lions, the Bears, and Cardinals have each requested interviews or have them scheduled for later this week. All uh, today, ESPN reporting the New York Giants also want to meet with Shermer. Meanwhile, Vikings quarterback Sam Bradford has come back to practice two months after that cleanup surgery on his left knee. This was the first week he was eligible to resume practicing with the team. Vikings have a first-round bye and open the postseason at home January 14th. They now have up to three weeks to decide whether or not they'll put Bradford back on the active roster for the playoffs. Wild forward Zach Parisi makes his season debut tonight at the X as the Wild play Florida. Parisi had missed the first 39 games of the season after having that preseason back surgery. Uh, also on the injury front for the Wild, and you don't need a rider. Will practice tomorrow. He should be back for Thursday's game against Buffalo. News notes from today. Michelle Bachman says she's thinking about a run for the U.S. Senate seat vacated today by Al Franken. Bachman was appearing on the Jim <laughs> Baker show when she talked about it. Bachman represented Minnesota's 6th Congressional District from 2007 to 2014, unsuccessfully ran for the 2012 Republican nomination for president. Did you guys know Jim Baker was still alive? I was this not. the former preacher or the former Secretary of State? It's the preacher. Hmm. I had for to look, real? Yeah. I had to look it up. Get I, out. I thought I thought he was, uh, he, we'd already lost him. Like PTL Club. That's correct. He's to, and he he doesn't look anything like he used to. He has very gray hair. How's that hot wife of his? I think she, I think we did lose her. Oh, is that Tammy? Tammy's the one that uh, passed away. I think Jim Got it. Jim though is still with us. Why well, her face was a crime scene. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> Tammy Faye Lavalley. Oh, they got divorced in '92. Yeah, I remember he uh, he was. Caught was he with, unfaithful? Yeah, he was caught with. Wasn't it Jessica Hahn? I believe. I'll be damned. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be damned. Yeah, we lost Surprise. her in oh uh, seven at age sixty five. Yeah, <clears throat> Tam. Tammy well, he, was from International Falls. She had a makeup problem. Oof. Especially she when did she like was to bawling on live TV. Yeah. Her yeah. face was melting. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Tina Smith replaces Franken tomorrow, <laughs> has pledged to run for the remainder of Franken's term in a November special election. The only other candidate to announce her run in the special election is State uh, Senator Karen Housley. Uh, Karen, I'm sorry, Karen Housley, a Republican who represents an East Metro Suburban District. Be very careful how you po- point out where she lives. Yeah, not an East Minneapolis. Not an East Minneapolis uh, Suburban. A baker attended North Central University Bible College affiliated with the Assemblies of God in Minneapolis, where in 1960 he met fellow student Tammy Faye LaValle. She worked at a restaurant inside the Young Quinlan Department Store in Minneapolis. Huh. Didn't know that. Didn't know any of that. I didn't even need to know that. Sure. <laughs> oh, you know. Your but, life hey. is not enriched. <laughs> no. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, that's a good theme yep. for twenty. Let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Or we can't even get that right. Right, that's yeah. the other one. <laughs> What's Reber's doing? Is he in Facebook? Oh, I'm listening. He's right here. He's he's fine. He's listening intently. He's, yeah. he's looking at sports on his computer, not Facebook. Hey, I folks, can... if you're on Westbound 94 <laughs> right now, uh, authorities, troopers. And first units are in the process of moving a center lane blocking crash at Groveland over to the right shoulder. Groveland, of course, between LaSalle and the Lowry Hill Tunnel. Breezy Point Police Department reports two of its officers, with help from a state trooper, were able to wake up sleeping homeowners and evacuate them from a burning house on early New Year's Eve day. A post of the department's Facebook page said officers Jason Reber and Jay Lorch were performing patrols at about 2 in the morning in temps near 26 below. They noticed a single-family home with flames coming through the roof. After calling the fire department, the post said Reber was able to force his way into the house. With the help of Lorch and state trooper Nicholas Diederich, everyone inside, the two occupants and several animals, were all brought out safely. Was the house a loss, John? That I don't know, Kenny. Okay. Senator Orrin Hatch announced today he's going to retire from Congress at the end of the year after having served in the upper chamber since 1977. How old is he? He's 83. Okay. President years of age. Okay. President Pro Temp. It, it? it is. Yeah. Uh, made the announcement just a few weeks after Republicans passed a major tax overhaul package. He has served as chairman of the Senate Finance Committee since 2015, the longest serving Republican senator in U.S. history. Uh, his retirement, of course, raises the possibility that former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney could run to fill his seat in November's midterm elections. Last month, the president spoke to Romney, according to White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway, and that was one subject that did. Come up. 
I asked if the house was a total loss because I was wondering what Royce would do if the cops broke into his house, told him his attic was on fire. I'd wonder if he'd, he'd say, hey, you know what? I'm down in the basement. I'm going to take a chance. <laughs> right. it's, it's 20 below <laughs> out. See what nice in my basement. <laughs> right. We're going to take a vote here, and I'm the only one. I a vote sleep of one. another hour. <laughs> right. Plus, uh, Timberwolves are playing. i got to watch this game here. Colonel Anthony Town. Go to work, boys. <laughs> See you later. Tell me when you're. Hey, tell me when you're down. There's meatloaf in the fridge. <laughs> Duluth has earned the title as the number three. I really like meatloaf. The oh, singer. You can't be yeah, the which one though? No, food. the food. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, not the singer. No. <laughs> yes, I do. I like, I like meatloaf. meatloaf. How, How about, about you? you? Yeah. Duluth. <laughs> Has earned the title. What is it that you like about it? the texture, Joe? What, what's uh... I'll tell you what I like. Uh, what I really like are the days following its initial serving. Yeah, uh, you get a yeah. nice sandwich out of it. Second day meatloaf. Is thank the best. you, Myron. I had thank a meatloaf you. sandwich yeah. today. Well, you're a lucky man, Kenny. Cheese and pickles. Oh, on you're a lucky oh. man. Yeah. Would you put a big glob of Velveeta on it? No, it was. It's hard cheddar straight from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Double meatloaf. I hate. No, I, I don't. Oh, I like it. This is a pretty he good never, show, isn't it? <laughs> he never did finish that uh, slice of meatloaf in the Christmas story. We can't did he? even get that right, can no, we? No, no. Duluth has earned the title as the number three city in the U.S. for beer drinkers. Really, co- it's co- a small town, according to the website Smart Asset. With thirty-one bars and ten point four breweries per one hundred thousand residents. The city scores highly for its beer offerings and venues. But these are both elbows on the bar drunk out of their mind, right? These aren't the snotty Reavers people, are well, they? These, these are the real breweries. <laughs> I think yeah. it's the combination. Yeah. The data also says the it's average... It's not the down on your luckers no. you know, quarter for a glass. <laughs> data says the average pint of draft beer in Duluth costs about two bucks. That's the cheapest amount on the top 25 list. What kind of beer can you get for two bucks? Have they been to Wisconsin? <laughs> no, they've never been to Wisconsin. Well, but Joe, if you go to a tap room, your your average tap's about five. Well, yeah, but this is two tap rooms. But average, he said. Yes. That's average, yes. Yeah, so well, that'll count the bars and breweries. Duluth is home to the sixth largest brewery in Minnesota, Bent Paddle Brewing Company. It's also the base for Fitger's Brew House, number 24 on the business journals list of the top 25 largest breweries <laughs> in the state. Of Minnesota. And Bent Paddle's opening up a new spot. I don't know if they have already, but I think their plan was at some time at the beginning of the year. Did you see where Summit's had to lay off people? Yeah. What? There's wars in the craft brewing industry. No. One yeah. uh, their 100 market share people. is taking a dent. Oh, I did not know people. that. Mm-hmm. You should know that. You're the head of the beer show. I was going to say, we just had him on like two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> you should read a newspaper, Chris. That's, nah. It's been on the front page last It's not week. on my computer. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> Nearly, uh, how's that make you God, feel? I news, wish that newspaper wasn't man, yeah. <laughs> I really wish that was Newspaper man in the other room, how's that make you feel? Dreadful. I read you. Yeah. It's on my well, computer. It's on, a, on the computer. Yeah. Nearly $800 million up for grabs between the Powerball and Mega Million jackpots wow. this week, meaning uh, 2018 could be a rewarding year for someone lucky enough to have a winning ticket for either one of those. No winner in Saturday and it's Powerball drawing, and that pushes the prize Wednesday tomorrow to an estimated four hundred forty million dollars. Is that when the tickets wow. drawn is tomorrow? Correct, Wednesday. I know they always say that lottery winners go broke after six. You can't go broke with that four hundred. No. Oh, you could, Myron. You well, could. Uh, really, you think so? Everyone in this room could. Normal people couldn't. I'd be dead <laughs> in six months. Yeah. Right. I'd like to try. Reavers, what's, uh, to see what's Reavers might start a body part on fire. I think. <laughs> <laughs> What's like Uncle hand. Sam take from you there, Rook? If you yeah. four, four, half, half, right? your uh, your take home pay. We looked it up here oh for the God, mega God. tonight. Tonight's I hate drawing. Lottery talk. I know. One hundred and twelve million tonight. Tomorrow's take home one thirty nine. One thirty nine after tax. Four forty. These people are crooks. Oh. You can go broke after that. I don't, I, think, I, you can I don't think so. I couldn't. Rook, no. would you listen every day? I might even drive by. I would drive by with the limo, waving to you as you walk in to the mm-hmm. work here. Mm-hmm. Maybe and and remember, I'll pick up one check. Mm-hmm. You've been picking up checks for 27 years. Whatever you want to go, I got it. Uh, John, you're out of time in this segment. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Found me a little meatloaf. Huh? <laughs> I know you like it. It's better the second day, though. Yeah, you're right. So is this song. (laughs) (laughs) 
A would-be fair dodger who tried to jump the ticket barriers at London subway station oh. got his uh, swimsuit area stuck in the doors. Oh, that'll happen. Oh, he no. tried to Have jump over. Have you guys over. seen this video? No. Oh, no. it's it's hard to watch because he's just screaming he's his hurting, head off. Huh? Yeah. There are yeah. screams, as Chris said, of agony, yeah. and there is a it's a big hall, and there's a large crowd gathered. So as he's screaming in agony, they're all uh, watching the whole thing unfold at Covent Garden. A witness with a cell phone filmed the whole thing. <laughs> oh, no. The crowd, uh, you could Did he be... snag him? Or what? What happened? It's, well, you can't really tell when you watch it, uh, but... Yeah, He's it's... grabbing right where you would expect. Oh, no. He tried to jump uh, over the thing and somehow... Caught... What did he try to jump over? The the, the twirling thing? The dural Turn door style. thing. Yeah, Turn the... You got to time that thing right, man. Yeah, right. Uh, London Underground... And we're a cup. What? <laughs> London Underground. So it was like running into a bat, basically. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> London Underground staff members can be seen working oh. alongside members of the British Transport Police to try and uh, free the man's area from yeah. the predicament. I would be on break at that point. Like, oh, you know, I would go well, how'd it get here, hooked? Right? The, here's the funny part. Well, the, Kenny, it got caught. The tour, turnstile nabbed it. So it's, it was kind of stuck in between. Like it's, it's wound around? Yeah. yeah. You know, hey, what the hell? That was me. I got my hand caught me in like drill press. When I hit barbed wire with my snowblower and yeah. it spools up? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, no. The uh, crowd, they're, they're not very sympathetic. They start jeering, and uh, some of the yells included, Quick, get some butter. Butter him up. Butter him up. <laughs> get the butter. How embarrassing for this guy. Some guy's filming this whole thing. Remember yep, when our first instinct... Thing. Was to pull out our phone and call for help. Yeah. yeah. Now, now it's just the film. I got to put this on yeah. YouTube in his right. worst possible moment. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers erupted as the man eventually was freed by a brave cop uh, who, in somewhat uh, awkward fashion, gently lowered the man to the ground from the hip, face first and horizontal. All I'm picturing is that scene from Something About Mary where he's zipping up his oh! pants oh, and the. Uh, the dad of the date for the promise to come help him out. Right. Thank God I don't remember that reference. We got a bleeder! <laughs> it's not clear what happened to the man after uh, he got free. The film cuts off just as it looked like the policeman who rescued him was taking him over into the corner to have a little chat with him. A uh, lot of Facebook views, uh, views, as you might expect, more than 56,000 in the first day it was posted. What was there to talk about with police? Like, what did he have to... <laughs> He had to relive this thing? Don't do Did that. you see that, Bill? Oh, my make, gosh. He had to make a report? <laughs> Probably had to arrest him. <laughs> Here's a bad first date. Authorities say an intoxicated Dallas woman who was on a first date with a prominent Houston trial lawyer caused at least $300,000 in damages to his art collection, including two Andy Warhol paintings. 29-year-old Lindy Lehman was arrested on criminal mischief charges after her date with Anthony Busby. She's in the no-go zone. Well, it's funny you mention that. I saw her picture, and the first thing I thought of was the hot, crazy matrix. <laughs> she would have been Tiffany in your redhead? She is, uh, she is, uh, she's got it written all over. 49-year-old mm. Busby, according to prosecutors, told investigators that Lehman got too intoxicated on their date, so he called her an Uber after they got back to his house. Busby said Lehman refused to leave and hid inside the home at that point. <laughs> that when he found her and called a second Uber, she became aggressive. Authorities said she tore down several paintings from the wall, poured red wine on some of them while oh. yelling obscenities. She then threw two $20,000 sculptures across the room, shattering both of them. The damaged Warhol paintings, each valued at a half a million dollars, according to court documents. Busby is represented... Well, like it's a soup can, so yeah. <laughs> Busby has represented high-profile figures in the past, including former Governor uh, Rick Perry in an abuse of power case. Uh, Then-candidate Donald Trump also visited Busby's home last year when Busby held a fundraiser for his presidential campaign. Fully this insured. is the first date? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, first date. I, so, wait, he doesn't notice this at dinner? That maybe this might not be a good idea to... Maybe he did, and that's home. where he's kind of first starting to, how am I going to get out of this so one? She's, she's not unattractive, but she's on the hot, crazy matrix. <laughs> She's got the bad look in her eye. But these <laughs> items are f fully insured, right? Oh, yeah, I Joe. I take her, you take so, her back yeah. home? You go home? Yeah, you're right, Joe. Reavers, she, look her up. Re I'm he looking did. at a photo of her right now. She's the kind of girl that would destroy your house on the right, first date. Right, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. After she destroys the first $250,000 painting, don't yeah. don't you just, like, stand in front of her? It's like what? You just watch her do uh, more damage? I like, suppose he you... was afraid to uh, do any physical harm to her. <laughs> yeah. The mugshot, though, she does have... A look on her face that she's quite pleased with what she's right, done. Right. So, uh, speaking of drinking, a Florida judge says a sheriff's office must retain custody sure. of a horse whose owner was charged with drunken driving while riding the animal. 
In a report by the Ledger, Polk County Judge Sharon Franklin said 53-year-old Donna Byrne was unfit to care for the horse. Byrne was arrested November 2nd, riding her horse down a highway. Police said her blood alcohol level while riding the horse was twice Florida's legal limit. Byrne's attorney said he'll revisit the custody issue January 11th at a hearing regarding her intoxication. Last week, you may have seen pictures of this online. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, a guy was cutting a fellow's hair. Uh, yeah, he a, got the Larry Fine. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, we talked about this last week. Oh, you did. I missed okay. it. What happened? A guy went in the barber shop in uh, Wisconsin, and he ended up looking like Larry Fine of the Three Stooges. <laughs> the guy, the guy uh, was wouldn't sit still basically, and and was agitating the hairdresser. Oh, so he just went <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, top of the guy's head. <laughs> No, that's curly. Dang it. You sure that was a mistake? I mean, I'm from Wisconsin. I don't know. I mean, that might be trendy up there. Yeah. Give me that Three Stooges fade. Huh? Might, that might be the thing in that part of Wisconsin, I'm telling you. What are the chances of having twins born in different years? Probably pretty good. You know, you get one at one to midnight, then one at one after midnight. I don't think it's a big deal. Wow. Just like a plane took off from Miami and tw- uh, Hawaii in 2018, it landed in 2017. Big deal. Well, it's huh? all it's next all story, stories John. I got. Yeah, I guess that's it. Huh? <laughs> well, tell me more about it. Well, this one. Well, let me tell you about this one. Yeah, what in fact, got? Joe, huh? Doctor Syed Tamjiji, oh yeah, who, him who delivered these babies. Says I've been doing this 35 years. I've never seen it happen. So. Oh, big deal. <laughs> What time was the first one born? Uh, the first one was born at 11.58 p.m. I rest my case. And the second one born? 12.16. There you go. Big so, deal. So what was the name of the doctor? John. Uh, Tajiji. Sayad Tajiji. Sayad Tajiji. What country yes. was this, John? Uh, this was here, actually, okay. uh, sir. This was at the... Uh, bet it happens. I bet it happens all the time. I, I don't right. think it happens all oh, the time. It happens so. all the time. I think it's somewhat oh, Just once a year. Not Four, all the time. Three. Yep. There's the doctor two, now. One. Zero. And a uh, car dealership in China had to be closed for the afternoon, so staff could count out about $11,000 worth of coins used to buy a car. The video recorded at a dealership. What person <laughs> from hell would do that to a staff it's member? China. It's China. It's China. You well, pay for a car it, in Jake, coin. It's Chinatown. <laughs> there was a guy here who just paid a $3,000 uh, DMV bill yep. with uh, pennies. Oh, yep. uh. This video, this video is recorded at a dealership in Putian City, Fujian Province. Shows employees at a BMW dealership's office using every available surface, including the floors, to count out coins from more than 10 large boxes. The coins reportedly brought in by a man who said he wanted to use them to buy a car. The businessman told dealership employees he had been saving up all of his coins uh-huh. for years, eventually decided to use them to buy this car because BMW had always been his dream car. Isn't that nice? They make you go to a bank here. I mean, they wouldn't do that. No, they wouldn't. They would let you do They wouldn't take your yeah. coins here. No. What about the plane that left and landed in this previous year? Yeah, what's year? that? I missed that story, Joe. Can you tell me more <laughs> yeah, about that one? That I'm one learning how that one I ain't getting in no bleeping time machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Yep. Radio show is filling in for Patrick and has the uh, the ride with Myron tonight, and I don't know what it is you have coming up. A lot of Vikings talk, a lot of uh, Case Keenum, Timberwolves, our and man Gophers Case, basketball. our man Case, man. Yeah, I'm gonna, I like Case. I'm gonna make the case that you know he deserves more love, like I did earlier on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so we'll talk a lot about that, a lot about what's going on in the local local scene. Uh, Wilder at home tonight, hosting. Florida. Florida's got a decent team. The Wild, everybody keeps waiting for them to make a run. Yeah. I I don't know when that might happen. Well, Parisi saves the day, right? Uh, I'd like to be excited about his return, but uh, professional athletes with back injuries are yeah. problematic in hockey. One bad hit. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's hard to know what to expect. I mean, Tiger Woods plays golf, and look at the problems he's had with, with his back. Yeah. But uh, good luck to Zach Parisi. He is back in the lineup tonight. 1500 ESPN is KSTP St. Paul, Minneapolis. It's 12 degrees. Myron Metcalf next. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. 
Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today.